clean, accurate cuts with the track saw demand a good setup and a thoughtful sequence. For a setup, I prefer a table rather than a pair of sawhorses, and on top of that, I put a sacrificial piece of rigid foam. I cut my 4x8 sheet of foam into three pieces, then tape them back together to create a fan fold that's easier to store between uses. The sheet of plywood sits on top of the foam, giving me full cutoff support in every direction. You want to set the saw's depth of cut so that you have just shy of one full tooth going through the plywood and into the foam. I like to mark these commonly used depths right on the saw. You also want to make sure that the teeth of the saw are flush to the zero clearance strip on the track. With all this set, you're ready to cut. When cutting up sheet goods, you can never ever trust that the factory edges are straight or square to each other. Instead, the process starts by creating two square sides. The first cut should always be along the length of the plywood, about one quarter to one half inch in from the edge. I set the track for this first rip cut by eye, because at this point, the goal is to get a straight cut, not to be dead parallel or square. Next, use the one long clean edge of the sheet as a reference to create a second clean square edge. We'll use a framing square later, but for this part of the job, that tool is just too small. It's more accurate to either square up using measurements and a 345 triangle, or a big folding layout square like shown here. Again, keep the cut close to the factory end of the sheet to maximize the stock. Track saw tracks have grippy strips to help them stay in place, so technically you don't need clamps unless you're cutting melamine, pre-finished plywood, or a sheet with some other slick surface. Still, a pair of clamps can cost less than a single sheet of plywood and will ensure you start right on the cut marks and stay that way, even if the cord or hose catches the track. With two fresh cut square edges to work from, move on to the long rip cuts. Each cut is laid out with two measurements, one at each end of the sheet. After marking both ends of the sheet, position the track so that the zero clearance strip is aligned with a pencil mark on both ends. With the clamp in the track, but left loose, I like to measure again, this time from the cutting edge of the track back to the clean edge of the plywood. This double check confirms that I'm still on layout before clamping the track in position. Let the blade get up to full speed before plunging to your preset depth and advancing into the edge of the plywood. With the track secured, one hand pushes the saw and the other guides the hose and power cord to avoid snags. Often the last cut will be a piece that is narrower than the track itself. In these cases, I use double stick carpet tape to hold the piece down to the foam and an off cut of the same thickness to help support the track. There are a few options for making cross cuts and the method you choose depends on the width of the piece to be cut and the number of same size pieces you need to create. The fastest method is to measure along one edge of the piece, mark the length, and use a framing square to mark the cut line. If it's wider than 24 inches, you can revert to one of the methods used for marking rip cuts. Often pieces will be too narrow for easy clamping, and the overhanging length of the track becomes a real hassle. Unless you have a short track for these cuts, it's a good idea to put off cuts under the overhanging end of the track so they can use the clamps. Although it's also possible to use the track saw for cross-cutting the narrowest rips, I like to go to the miter saw for this task whenever possible. If the job involves multiple sheets with multiple pieces of the same size, you can also make gang cuts. In those cases, just align the pieces, clamp them together, and cut them as one big group. Follow this sequence and work carefully, and you'll be rewarded with clean-edged, consistent parts, all without a table saw. For more, visit finehomebuilding.com slash magazine or click the link below.